Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to build another Streamlit app, but unlike the last video where we simply uploaded a single file, we're going to build an app that allows us to upload 500 data files. And in fact, we're going to take the code we built a few videos ago and convert that into a Streamlit app. This is a sort of process that when I'm working with others and they don't want to see the code, this is how I would actually deliver that solution. And so I'm oftentimes combining multiple analytical data files into one, doing some processing and then sending them a code free solution. And in this video, we're gonna take that a step further and I'm gonna show how we can incorporate more unsupervised learning, um, data clustering into this process in a way that's dynamic. So let's get started. On the right side of the screen, I have the original code we developed a few months ago. And so if you wanna see that original video, again, that link is in the description. And so we're gonna focus on the left side as we now convert this code into a Streamlit app. So at the beginning of the window, you see the necessary modules of Streamlit, Pandas. And once again, this helper mod is a module we developed to do PCA and output a data frame. We'll then use Seaborn and Matplotlib for data visualization, SQLR and decomposition, just to incorporate the PCA module. And then as well, we're going to use SQLR and cluster to gain access to some of the other clustering modules we're gonna need in this particular video. And so the first line of code is to just set up the page. So now we do have a Streamlit page. If we run um, this command in the terminal in VS Code, we now have an app that's going to get running in the background. And if we see, we just simply have a blank page. So let's start filling this with content. The first thing we want to do is build our multi-file file uploader. To do that, we will use the file uploader. So we're just going to make a new variable called files and use the st.fileuploader. The first thing we want to do again is pass in a label. So we're just going to call this upload data files. The next thing we want to do is uh, select the variable as update the call that says accept multiple files. And so we're going to change that and set this equal to true. And now we can upload multiple data files into this uploader and it will output a file list with all the necessary data attached to it. The next thing we want to do is write some control command, some flow control so that we don't automatically run this full app because if we add again, add data processing and there is no data to process, we will just error out and we want to avoid unnecessary error messages on the screen. And so we're going to say if files. So again, this assumes that if files is true, then it will run the rest of the code. And we're going to say if files um, st dot write the length of files. And this will give us an idea of the number of files we have. By association, if files is false or there are no files, this line will not run. So we save this file. We can go over to our app. And you see that now we have a drag and drop files here and we can upload multiple files. So if I navigate to where I have all of my data files and I go down, um, just for demonstration purpose, I don't need to upload all 500, but we've got 100 files I'm going to upload. We simply drag and drop here and you can see that it quickly processes these data files. And because there's data there, we've asked it to write the length of our file uploader list. And we have now 101 files notice here that we can actually see the progress of each file as it was running and the size of each of the files there are 34 pages so we have quite a bit of of, of data up here so let's get to you on the next thing we want to do and, and from this point on everything will be tabbed at once so that it will be controlled by the the files the next thing we want to do is is create a list of data frames so we're going to do we're gonna, we can actually do this with a list comprehension where we now write pd.read. These are CSV files. So pd.read CSV file or files in or file and files. And so we're not gonna work on ensuring we have CSVs because we know this is a fairly clean data set. The next thing we wanna do based on this code over here is actually concatenate and we can just copy this over because we were still using DFs. And if we want to show the first few rows of data, 
Again, we can use the data frame method and look at X. So now we've, we've read in our files, we're showing the file length. We're going to merge those into a list of data frames and they can concatenate that data frame, concatenate those data frames, transpose, and then show the, the combined data set. So now each sample is contained as its own row and this is a fairly narrow sample set. So each of the files only has 10 variables and we see that this is now working properly. So the next thing we want to do is now uh, is do PCA. So the data set for this case is already fairly well scaled. So we're not, we don't need to do too much pre-processing, but this is where we would also do the pre-processing if necessary. And so the next thing I want to do is make a new variable called PCADF. And we're going to use our PCA, our get PCA method to compute the PCA of X. We also only want two data frames, I'm sorry, two components. And so let's run that. The next thing we're going to do is data viz. So we're first going to create our scatter plot of this data so that you can see what it looks like. And I'm just going to annotate that so we know what we're doing next. And in this case, we're going to use Seaborn and Matplotlib for it. When visualizing PyPlot data, it's actually better to use this big X notation equals plt dot subplots. And that's because the PyPlot method from Streamlit needs to take a figure object and thus it is automatically generated when we use plt dot subplots. And so we don't need to pass any arguments to this. It just allows us once we build our figure to render it to the Streamlit application. So the next thing we do, and actually this is going to error out because I'm not tapped in properly. So the next thing you want to do is just is simply make our figure. So what we can do the seaborn.scatterplot. We're going to pass in PCADF. X will equal component one. Y equals component two. I know the label of, of the name of these columns because we've used this get PCADF, which outputs a, uh, outputs a data frame with columns named one and two or up to the number of components. Next, um, we'll just pass in color equals none, and we'll update this as we build out our code. Lastly, the, what we want to do is illustrate, is render a figure to the page. To do that, we will use streamlit.pyplot this time. So in the last video, we used the plotly chart method. In this case, we're gonna use pyplot. We pass in fig and we should be good to go. So let's save this and check their page out. And as you see, we've got our, our file list, our data frame and a very large stream with figure. Okay. So the next thing we want to do, so we've done this before, where if we, if we go back to our original processing, we know that we should have about five clusters. And in the case that we have a more complicated data set, we would still want to apply maybe some unsupervised clustering to see the areas of density visualized. Now we've done this a number of ways over the channel where we've used DB scan that looks for densities. We've, we've done agglomerative clustering, which looks for sort of a nearest neighbor approach and builds up to the number of clusters we've predefined as well as K means. In this video, we're going to use, again, we're going to use DB scan and also mean shift. The reason I'm using these two is because we don't have to specify the number of clusters, but rather just some parameters to search for it, but know that you can use any clustering algorithm you would want. So to do that, we're going to make new variables above here. We're going to call this uh, data clustering. And I want to make a variable called DB color and to do this, we're going to run DB scan, the epsilon value, which is the major variable that will determine how, how the clusters will be determined. In this case, we want to set epsilon to 0 0.4. We're going to run our fit predict method on this and pass in PCA DF. The other model we want to use is mean shift. We're going to just call this MS color and run mean shift here in this method you would pass in uh, you can specify a bandwidth 
as well as cluster all, which are two of the major um, arguments in this method. And so for bandwidth, we want to set that to 0 0.95 and we'll set cluster all equal to false. And so now we have two variables that we can use to then overlay color. The other thing we want to do is set the as type equal to string. That way the, the cluster variables are actually computed as strings instead of numerical values. And this will just help with the plotting. Next, let's make our radio selector. So to make these changes, to apply the changes to the figure, we want the flexibility of a, a basically a new widget. And so we use this in the last video as well, where we're going to use the radio so, uh, method and we'll pass in a label with that we will call select color select cluster algorithm algorithm and we will pass in a list so our color our, I'm sorry, our options will be a list and let's just make our list here um, i'm going to call it c map and we're actually going to make a dictionary you'll see why in a, in a minute so in our dictionary we're going to pass we have we want a key called none so for no specific color algorithm and that would be none we also want a key for uh, db color and we will make that key db color i'm sorry that value db color and we also want a key called ms color the value will be ms color the options here needs to be some iterable and so for this, we were actually going to pass in a cmap.keys. So it'll just take a list of the key values. So none, db color, and ms color. And when we apply that color, which in here actually should be hue, when we apply that, we will use cmap. And just this will be a list of keys. We need to make this, uh, let's just call this color underscore. We'll pass in the, the color underscore value, which would be a key in this dictionary. So none db color or ms color, and it will actually output uh, none db color as this list or ms color this list here. And it should work just fine. And let's make sure our indentation is correct. It should be tapped in. It should be tapped in. It should be tapped. Okay, there we go. So if we save this, uh, we got an error, no attribute as type, because I didn't I didn't actually fit the model. So fit predict, and we're gonna call PCA DF. Give us a little bit more space. PCDF at fit predict. Let's save that. And we get an error. Let's see what this says. Oh here this should be this okay there we go so now we have our very large figure and what we want to do next is just change the color so db color so you've got this and ms color we've got that okay so we're starting to see some of our clusters pop up this data set has five clusters based on how it was defined so the next thing i want to do is now upload all the data files and make a few more tweaks to the layout and so for the radio selector, let's just add this secondary method. Let's just chain the sidebar and that will move this to the sidebar here and clean it up just a little bit. So when there's data, if you run this, you see that this now appears over here and that makes everything look a lot better. And you can see how the chart changes all in one view. And so um, again, this negative one is an indicator of, of data that isn't um, sort of in a group. It's just sort of considered an outlier or just in sort of a sparse area of the map. Uh, but let's see what this looks like once we include all of the data. So let's go back here and I'm going to drag in the rest of this data file. Let's bring this forward. And instead of stopping at 100, let's go all the way down to 500 drag these over you see that it runs fairly quickly these are these are not super large files um, 
and then we we duplicated a few of them, but that's okay. So we have our, our previewer, and now you can see what the full dense data set looks like, where we're using now our DB color. So it's this, well, these models really look for where we have uh, dense areas of points. And although these are not uh, circular, these actually still fit fairly well. The purple here is considered are points that are considered sort of outliers or they're not really within that core sample set. And if we go back to none, we go we have our our single blue dots. The other thing that we should do is incorporate a title so we know which model we're using to fit. And so after the scatterplot, we can use the set method. Um, we're going to use title equals. Let's pass it F string. That'll set the um, a dynamic string variable. And let's say the plot is colored by. And we use the curly brackets and we'll just say color algorithm. And so we can obviously do much more than this, but this allows you to see how we can build more into this. Let's save this. And now, actually, this didn't make a lot of sense, but now we have the none algorithm, um, the DB color algorithm, or the MS color algorithm. And so we get we get tweak this even more. But you can see now we're building dynamic applications. We're doing some data processing. We're running a couple models as we see fit. We can move these around so that the models only run after we've selected here. Because of the order of operation, we're selecting the model that has already run and we're basically just pulling a list down into this figure, but that's okay too, because our data is not super large. And so streamlined applications are great because you can do all sorts of, of these dynamic data processes. As you saw the first time I only uploaded hundred files and it still worked when I uploaded the full sample set. And so that's one of the keys to being able to deploy these sort of dynamic apps and not locking it down to the original analyses. If you want to see more, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.